Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make motorcycle travel vlogs, how to's, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. And this is going to be a little bit of an informal update. <laughs> we just got done with Rocky Mountain Roll 6, which was incredible. If you were able to make it, thank you so much. We had an absolute blast. We lucked out so much with the smoke, you guys. I'm sure a few of you know that Idaho and Montana have been very on fire this summer, and we have had a lot of smoke in the Bitterroot. Uh, but as soon as people started run, rolling in Friday, the weather just started clearing up and we could see the mountains again. Saturday was gorgeous. We did get rained on Sunday, <laughs> which made for a very interesting ride to Missoula <laughs> in a downpour. No big deal. But it was an absolute blast. And as always, it is always worth all of the effort that goes into running this event because the people who show up just make it so awesome. <laughs> and I get to meet amazing new people. Uh, shout out to Mark for letting me ride his Africa Twin. I finally got to ride an Africa Twin, you guys. I also got to ride a Royal Enfield. That was super fun. I got to ride a Ural. I got to ride a lot of bikes this weekend. <laughs> anyway, uh, normal scheduled programming will return next week. The next episode and my adventure at Get On ADV Fest will come to you next week. But I was moving a little bit slower this week than planned cleaning everything up so I haven't quite left Montana yet I'm supposed to be back in Portland by now but I'm not <sighs> that's fine and I forgot to introduce you to the new bike in my collection this is Hermes <laughs> the messenger because my friend Amanda Pants used it to escort everybody from the gate on our property to where everybody is camped <laughs> so Hermes seemed like a very fitting name I will be returning to Portland shortly and then my next grand adventure will be going to Overland Expo in Flagstaff, Arizona in September. I am extremely excited. So if you're going, let me know down in the comments. I'm also a little bit behind on answering comments. So I figured I would take this opportunity to answer some of the questions that have been showing up in the comments on the fly. Tom Hines asked on my Get On ADV Fest video, do you ever get nervous before you go out on a long ride? I am super excited right before I go on a trip. All the buildup and the planning is like one of my favorite parts of traveling. I don't get nervous the night before a trip. I get nervous the night I have left. So I have left on the trip, left home, and the first night that I get somewhere is when all the anxiety builds up for me. Like, why did I do this? Was this the right decision? What am I doing? Why did it like over and over, why did I do this goes around in my head and I have done enough trips now. I know to push through it and it'll go away and it'll be fine. And the next day, everything is okay. Once I get the road again, everything is chill. I actually have a video where I kind of talk about how my brain does this thing. Um, and I'll link that down in the description or above my head somewhere so you can watch that video. You Wildy Rider asked me what version of the InReach that I have. I have the Garmin InReach SE because I knew that I wouldn't need any of the mapping functions that the Garmin Explorer has. And the Mini wasn't out yet when I bought mine. <laughs> the SD has been very trusty, totally, totally endorse it. If you do not need any of the extra mapping functions that the Explorer offers, the SE is perfectly fine and uh, a little bit cheaper. <laughs> Pamela Ty asked me, do you ever lock up your bikes when you go shopping or into a restaurant? I do not. I have considered a disc lock and maybe on my next trip to the East Coast, I will consider it. But most of the time when I'm traveling on the West half of the United States, when I stop and get groceries, most of the time it's in a very small town. I don't often stop to eat or get groceries or go anywhere. I know I'm gonna be away from the bike and I can't see it for more than like 10 minutes when I'm in a super urban area where the anxiety of, about the bike is a little bit higher, if you know what I mean. Highly recommend disc locks. Uh, Doodle has one that she highly recommends. Definitely go check out her channel. I tend to stick to the more rural areas if I can help it. <laughs> uh, Mason Mason asked on my Gale on ADV Fest video, what model is that camper? I have a 2003-2004 North Star pop-up camper. I think that it's around the same kind of model layout as some of the TC800s that North Star did. I haven't been able to quite find a layout that matches exactly what's inside my camper. <laughs> and the little paper that I have describing the camper just says North Star pop-up sliding camper. So <laughs> I was gifted that camper by one of my adoptive moms. You know, 
when you're a kid, everybody else's mom also becomes your mom. So I have multiple moms. That's the simplest way to explain that. Anyway, she got a hard side camper so she could camp in Yellowstone a little bit more comfortably. And she gifted the pop-up to my mom and dad who gave it to me back in November. So it's a relatively new addition, but I am loving it so far and taking it to get on ADV Fest was incredible. And I have zero regrets, even with the very, very painful fuel mileage that my truck got with the camper on the back. <laughs> John Gorski asked on the Get On ADV Fest video, maybe I missed something, but why did you pack the fridge with ice instead of running it off propane while traveling? The fridge has been quite the dilemma for me it for one it's old and it's a, supposed to be a three-way fridge right so it's supposed to run off of dc propane and ac unfortunately right now the fridge is only running off of ac so my plan was to plug it in overnight get it nice and cold stuff it full of lacroix for the road and stuff it full of ice packs so that at least the cool would last a little bit longer <laughs> <laughs> the fridge might be going away soon because on this trip to Montana for Rocky Mountain Roll, I brought the truck and the truck camper and unfortunately the fridge kind of feels like it's on its last legs. It was not getting cold the way that it was supposed to. I've had multiple people look at it. They can't figure out what's wrong. So uh, I'm thinking that a 12 volt DC fridge may be in my future um, and a little bit of demo on the truck camper to get rid of the old fridge. By the way, guys, I appreciate everybody who left me their, I was going to say awesome trailer stories, but some of them are very scary. So I just appreciate you for sharing your trailer stories with me <laughs> to make me and my brother feel a little bit better. Oh, and somebody asked me what LaCroix was. It's essentially just carbonated flavored water, lightly flavored water. <laughs> and it's been helping me kick some of my soda habit. So that's good. <laughs> Oh, hello, kitty. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm kind of losing the sun, aren't I? Okay, well, this has been fun. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I will have regular scheduled programming for you again next week. I'm sending you all digital hugs. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Question for my end screen crew. Since the last video, I have gotten a couple comments about people talking about what the ideal version of having a home base kind of camper rig and the motorcycle would be like. So let me know down in the comments, would you rather have a van that you can put the bikes in, a truck camper and a tow behind for the bikes, a toy hauler, like a fifth wheel for your truck and the bikes are in the toy hauler, or would you rather have a big beefy motorcycle with a pop-up camper on the back like Two Wheels Big Life have? And if you have some imaginative like option five, I'm also open to those ideas. So I'm looking forward to reading your comments. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.